Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be talking about spellcasting, and specifically, we're going to be talking about one of the most powerful casters in the game, the Bard. When Bards enter the second uh, half of the D&D campaign, the third tier of play, level 11, they get their sixth level spells. This is when we have left behind the world of multiple castings a day. These spells are world-shapingly powerful. Six-level spells really impact the game in a way that so few other things can, other than spells of even higher level. The choices you make here are pivotal, because these are going to be your once-a-day make-or-break spells. I've prepared a top five list that I recommend all bards consider once they reach this power level. Starting off with number five, we have True Seeing. True Seeing, very simple spell. You cast it, it consumes um, a little bit of gold to do so, and you can do it on yourself or on another, or another creature, and for one hour, concentration free, you gain True Sight. The ability to see all things as they truly are. So, first of all, invisibility, dis illusions, disguises, that sort of stuff, you can see through all of it. You also can see anything that's hidden by magic, such as trap doors or secret doors, and you can see into the ethereal plane. So even creatures that have ethereal powers to avoid you, you can see them too. True seeing is just a phenomenal spell, and for an hour that's enough to really get through a difficult situation, and with no concentration limit. It's, it's just great. It lasts for an hour, and, and, and it's, it's just solves so many problems when you can see through illusions. Any illusions, really. Now, at number four, we have the spell Hero's Feast. <laughs> Going from, you know, an hour-long true seeing to an hour-long feast. Hero's Feast takes ten minutes to cast. When you cast it, you have to use a thousand gold pieces worth of materials. So this is a pricey spell. Obviously, at level 11, you can probably afford it, but think twice before you just cast it as a whim. It takes 10 minutes to cast, and it creates a massive feast of wonderful food for a huge amount of people. I think it's 12. It's a large group. It takes an hour to consume the feast. So this is definitely, you know, a beginning or end of the day sort of thing. But once you've consumed the feast, you get a bunch of benefits. So you and the party, plus some key NPCs if you want, get a bunch of benefits. First of all, it cures you of all diseases and all poisons. So that's nice if you had anything lingering. Then it makes you immune to poison and immune to being frightened. So already we've got a great buff. It also makes it so that you have advantage on wisdom saving throws, just permanently, for the duration of this situation. It's not the next one you do, it's just all wisdom saves you make, which is awesome. And finally, it gives you temporary, uh, not temporary hit points, it boosts your hit point maximum. This isn't temporary hit points. This is actually boosting your, your top maximum level uh, by 2d10 and gives you that many hit points as well. So you're full of HP. 2d10 averages to about 11 extra hit points, which is great, even at the top, or top tiers. Um, and these benefits, once you've consumed the feast, last for 24 hours. So if you do this at the beginning of an adventuring day, when you're about to do something really difficult, advantage on wisdom saves, extra health, immunity to poison, immunity to fear, just really powerful buffs. A, a party that's consumed a hero's feast is going to be a challenge for a DM to take down. And it's expensive, but it is so, so worth it. Now for number three, we have the spell Eye Bite. Eye Bite is a fun one because it's very thematic. You cast the spell, it's got a minute long concentration time. While you're concentrating on the spell, you have this dread appearance. Your eyes, you know, look like they're void. And you can choose a creature 
uh, within range and do one of three things to them. You can either attempt to incapacitate them so they fall unconscious. Uh, you can attempt to make them afraid so they have to use their action and their movement to dash away from you. Or to sicken them, which basically means they have disadvantage on their attack rolls and ability checks. The creature makes a wisdom save to resist. If they fail, the effect takes place. If they fall unconscious, they stay unconscious for the whole minute unless they are damaged or shaken awake. The fear effect doesn't go away unless they end their turn out of sight of you at least 60 feet away. So in a small room, that's very, very powerful. And finally, the um, sickened effect, they can repeat the save every turn because that's really debilitating to have all that disadvantage. If a creature succeeds on their resistance, they're now immune to it, but every turn while you're concentrating on this, you can designate another creature to target. And as long as they haven't succeeded on a save against it yet, you can just keep doing these effects over and over and over again to debilitate the whole battlefield. It's, it's super powerful. You know, uh, any fear effect is going to make a difference. Disadvantage is great and being unconscious yeah, you can just ignore that enemy for a little while. Yeah, so I bite real powerful battlefield control and debuffing powers. But, number two on this list, very famous spell, Otto's Irresistible Dance. Irresistible Dance is famous because, one, it's incredibly funny. The idea that you can point at any enemy and they immediately start dancing. That's how that works. You designate an enemy, they start dancing. They dance in place, you know, tapping around, and they have to use their movement to do so, so they can't get away from you. The funny thing is it lasts for a minute. They can try to resist it on their turn using an action to make a wisdom save to end the dance. But if they fail while they're dancing, they have disadvantage on their attack rolls, Disadvantage on deck saves. They cannot move because they have to spend all of their, um, all of their movement dancing. And they have advantage. Any creature that attacks them has advantage. So now you've got this situation where a creature has to spend its action to stop dancing or accepts a huge penalty. Disadvantage for them, advantage for their enemies. So, and the inability to move. The trick about this, and this is the best part, is that there's no initial save. It doesn't matter if the creature has legendary resistance, it doesn't matter if they're a boss, it doesn't matter what they are. They just have to start dancing. No save, no resistance. It's only on their turn that they can attempt to save. So, if you're fighting a boss monster with legendary resistance, You've just bought yourself a turn. They have to spend their action, and they can't move on their turn, and they're going to use their legendary resistance to stop it, but that's still a turn you've bought yourself. Bravo. Finally, the number one spell for bards. One, because of its power, and two, because of its theme. Mass Suggestion. Just like its younger cousin, Suggestion, you designate uh, a course of action. Limited to a sentence or two. It has to sound reasonable, no self-harm, nothing that would cause the creature immediate, you know, pain or death. But as long as it isn't suicidal, you can suggest it to them. They make a wisdom save, and by they I mean 12 creatures. So it's a whole group that you can do this to. When you cast it, they make a wisdom save, and if they fail, they have to spend the next 24 hours carrying out what you said. You can designate a clause in it that if something is achieved before the 24 hours is up, then the spell just ends. But otherwise, they will continue following your suggestion for 24 hours. What's cool about this is that it's, it's first of all, it's a wonderful power for social situations. So you can convince not just one council member, but the whole council to do something for you, or not just convince one soldier, but like an entire group of guards. All of this works. Also, suggestion by its very nature, the creatures don't know they were um, enchanted in this way. 
So they think that they wanted to do this. They do not know that you enchanted them to magically do it. So that's also great. It can work phenomenal in a combat encounter where you have to stop everyone from fighting. You know, just, just one move. But the best part in my mind about this spell actually comes from its upcast. At level 6, or, or rather spell level 6, you can cast it and it lasts for 24 hours. But if you cast it with a 7th level spell, it actually lasts for 10 days. 10 days that these creatures have to follow your suggestion. At 8th level, it lasts for 30 days, so a whole month. And if you really want to just change the course of a campaign, if you use Mass Suggestion with a ninth level spell slot, the creature will follow your suggestion for a year and a day. The only real caveat to this is that if you or your party harm this creature, the spell ends for them. But if you... You could absolutely change the face of the world if you get the right people in the right place as a group and you Mass Suggestion them all. And then all of a sudden, they have to follow your suggestion for a while. For days, weeks, months, even up to a year. Imagine if you got a council that was a governing body in a room together. For the next year, they're going to be doing something you want them to do, and they'll think they came up with it. It's, it's stupid powerful in combat in social interactions, and for campaigns that are long-lasting. This is the spell. This is the game-breaking spell. And that's why, for a bard who loves to charm and deceive, it's number one. And I think that all of these spells are great, but Mass Suggestion especially stands out as truly the way that a player can warp the world to their whim. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below, and keep your eyes peeled for more spellcasting reviews coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.